church say amen. amen. We are glad to be back in the house of prayer one more time. I can never, I can never get tired of singing that song that we sing every Sunday morning. I'm glad to be in the service. Yeah. One more time. One more time. And now, and now we're going before the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Minister Simmons to lead us to the throne of grace. We have a large number of names on this prayer list, as you know, every Sunday morning. We cannot read all these names, obviously. But I do want you to remember those who are in the hospitals. And I am very pleased to announce that one of our colleagues, Bishop Rayford Bell's wife, was very ill, very sick, in a coma. But the prayers of the saints of God all over blessed her. And I want you to continue to pray for her that the Lord will continue to keep her on the road to full recovery. We know that the Lord is able. Another young man who is a member of our church, his parents are members of a faithful family, the Richardsons. Uh, some of you don't know, but his, uh, his son was cruelly injured in these little gang fracases when they jump on you and they hit him with a baseball bat. And it's really affected his eye in one place. And he, he's going along well, but he's out in the hospital walking around, but he's going to the hospital for a serious operation for bone transplants to redo things and, and to try to save that eye. Now I know it can be done. The Lord is able. So I want you to pray for him that the Lord will bless him in every way. Minister Simpson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we call upon your great and matchless name. We know, O oh God, that you are a great God. We know, O oh God, we behold the moon and the stars and the heavens and all the great work of God. We can stand back and say the awesome wonder of our God. O oh God, who wouldn't serve a God like you? For, O oh God, you've brought us through many dangers, seen and unseen. You, O oh God, have blessed us with miracles in our life, day after day, week after week. And, oh God, you bless us to be here in the house of God once again to call upon your name, to worship you, and to give you praise for what you've already done. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We come, oh God, in behalf of these names on the prayer list and the tragedies, oh God, and the evil that has been happening in our society from day to day to your people, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to stay the hand of the enemy. Oh God, bless the families, oh God, that have suffered the gang violence and thievery and lying, oh God, that is breaking families apart. We ask you, O oh God, specifically move with your mighty power of God. We ask you, O oh God, to heal bodies who are sick with cancer and heart trouble, O oh God, and blood pressure. God, you're able to heal and to make us whole, and we thank you. You are the bomb in Gilead. And O oh God, we call upon the anointing to bless this service today. Use the man of God like you've never used him before, so that the word of God can reach out to each and every needy soul that some might come to give their lives to you and that others would be encouraged, O oh God, to not be slothful and to find our place and what we should do for your kingdom. Keep us in the heart of your great hand, dear God. We thank you and praise your name forever. We call upon you and we know that it will be done. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture this morning is found in Psalms 18, 1 and 2. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. My deliverer and my God. My deliverer and my God. My strength in whom I will trust. My strength in whom I will trust. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised. Who is worthy to be praised. And the people said amen. Amen. God bless you.
I think about things gone by those wasted years we could have spent together but I've wasted them all trying to find I had it figured all out And I thought I had this world In the palm of my hand But I knew I was wrong The moment that I met you I'm 
Thank you very much, uh, Sister Heyman. I'm just sort of kind of talking into the mic. My lapel mic went bad on me, so I won't be able to move around and run all around like I usually do. <laughs> I'll have to stand still today. So is all, everything all right? Amen. All right. God bless.
Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when night alone and cold in sadness you are the laughter that shatters all my fears when I'm all alone your hand is there to hold oh. In the simple things in life, you're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and mine home, you're the source and finish. Of my dream. Oh.
church say amen? Jesus, you are the center of my joy. I want to thank the choir for the wonderful rendition of that beautiful song because we do want to make Jesus the center of attraction in our lives. We do not want him to be on the periphery. We see our life like a hub, like a wheel with Jesus at the very hub. And all of the spokes are emanating out from the hub. So I want to thank our choir for those messages. And now the time has come for the word of the Lord. And I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I want to thank all of, the, of our visitors and guests for being with us, especially the Heyman family who, are, who, who is here in Chicago from all parts of the country in a family reunion. And uh, once again, I am overjoyed to have all of you who are worshiping with us via television in your homes. It's always a joy to have you tune in to us, and I certainly hope that something that I will say this morning will be a a blessing to you as well. In the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse 13, I'll read. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. I want to speak to two classes of people here this morning. That's my general thrust. Nothing has changed. My subject this morning is, a, is the way, a way of escape, a way of escape. First, I want to address myself to the members of this congregation and to every saved person everywhere. Those of you who are in the overflow of this church, those of you who are at home watching on television, you may be in a hospital. I want you to have courage and I want you to believe in the word of the Lord some of our problems are that we fail to really believe and trust in the word of God to those of you who are seeking Christ seeking a deeper commitment but who have a great deal of fear about becoming a dedicated Christian. Not a church member. Church members are bound. The United States is filled with church members. I'd rather go to church than, to go, than not to go to church. But when I talk about a dedicated commitment to Christ, I'm not talking about a dedicated commitment to a denomination or to a church or to a specific congregation where your name may be placed. I really am talking about the person whom the Bible describes as being born again. A person that the Bible speaks of as being filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between a church member and a saint. 
There are many people who belong to churches who are unconverted. That's why we have so much trouble in churches. But I want to assure you as Christians, as saints of God, that the Lord will never leave you alone. And I want to assure those of you who are seeking Christ in a deeper and more, in a more profound way, not to be afraid, because a lot of you are very honest people. You may uh, be into a lot of things that you know you ought not to be into. That's why you're here. You, you're looking. You are, you are an anxious inquirer trying to, to find something to fill that spiritual void that's plaguing you. You may have a nice job. You may be driving a nice car. You may be living in a nice apartment or you may own a nice home. You may have a wonderful family and everything outwardly appears to be falling into place. But there's some yearning inside. Something that good jobs and money can't satisfy. You love your automobile and your boat that you you have in the summer but it still doesn't satisfy as you're looking for something but you're afraid because you don't want to play church you don't want to uh, start out and can't finish you don't want to really give your left self to the Lord because you think that there's so much temptation out here that how can I how can I live for Christ I want to be saved, but I don't want God to get mad at me by coming forward and then somewhere along the line I'll, I'll, I'll mess up. You know, sometimes preachers turn you away. They, while preaching a the sermon, they'll tell you, say, now if you don't want to walk with God, don't come. Then they quote that passage in the Bible about the, the man who had the devils cast out of him and went about in dry places seeking rest and finding none and then seven devils came in more evil than the other and say that the, the last end of that man is worse than the first and when you tell a person that looking for the Lord he said oh my God I'm bad enough but I don't want seven devils to come in so I guess I better stay out and uh, I'll, I'll take my chances out here because at least I don't have seven more devils to worry about. Of course, that's true in the Bible, but, and Jesus did say it, but he wasn't talking about saints of God who had been born again. He was just talking about a man who had had some demons cast out of him. See, having a devil cast out of you is not the same thing as being born again. It's a difference. So I don't want you to be afraid. You know, the Lord is not playing games with us when he talks about saving us he's talking about doing it completely and eternally we're not in a game this this game of like jacks or hopscotch where the Lord saves you today and and you do something and, and you're lost tomorrow or you're saved this week and lost next week or you're saved this year and, and you're lost next year and salvation is an is a iffy thing. Oh yes, the Lord is with you if. Oh yes, you'll save eternally if. Oh yes, this is wonderful if. And your salvation is based upon a lot of ifs, which I don't find really in the Bible at all. What good is it for the Lord to save us five or six times in life and then we backslide the last time and die backslidden in sin and eternally lost. What, what, what about all these times we were saved before? It's meaningless. It, it, it has no place. It has no part in the gospel of Jesus Christ. But this passage gives us total assurance. That nothing will be allowed to tempt you. 
that will be so strong and so severe that your faith in Christ will fail. Now there are two interpretations of this text. And I'm sure that many of you have read this text and have wondered about it. Because some of you have been tempted and you have been tried and, and you have uh, yielded. And you read this and you wonder what it's all about. One interpretation is that this speaks to individual and personal sins. I'm not quite sure that that's the case. I don't think that this passage of scripture tells you that you will never yield to temptation. I don't think it teaches that. I don't think our experience tells us that this is that. In fact, I believe that the word of God speaks differently and tells us that Christians, born again Christians, do commit sin. Now, I guess that's something that a lot of holiness ministers are going to jump all over me about tomorrow. But I want to clarify it a little bit. They don't live in sin. They don't practice sin because the Bible says he that is born of God does not continue in sin because the seed remaineth in him and he cannot practice sin because he has been born of God. But that does not speak to the individual who may, for whatever reason or another, yield. Sometimes a sin comes on him so fast and it's caught by such a surprise that sometimes he falls. There's a remedy for that. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John also, this is, the, this is the disciple who Jesus loved, also said, little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, I write to you that you don't do it. If you do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not an invitation to sin. It is a clear understanding of the remedy for it. Because if you take this scripture to mean that that's an invitation to sin, I think that that is a clear indication that you have never been born again. I don't know what they told you. I don't care what they told you in the tarry room. But I think that there's a second interpretation that speaks to the sins that destroy your faith and cause a loss of your salvation. And I do not believe that God is going to stand idly by the God that we say has all power. I don't believe he will stand idly by and destroy your faith and to cause you to lose your salvation I don't care what it is I don't care how long it lasts it will not be able to overthrow you because God will not allow he will not permit Satan to tempt you above that which you are able to bear remember that you cannot fight the devil the devil was here a long time ago. The devil was standing in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were there. The devil was there all along the way in man's life. And the devil has great wisdom that you are not able to cope with. And not only that, but the devil has uncounted hordes of demons who are everywhere. You think the devil is that. But you know, the devil is not like God. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. The devil is not even not one of them.
And the devil is not everywhere at the same time. If he's in New York, he can't be in Chicago. Oh, Bishop, Mr. Jeffer. No, you just think that now he can move fast. No, no. I don't want to minimize his capability. He can move fast, but he's not everywhere at the same time. But remember that he's got his demons. They're called fallen angels. They permeate the atmosphere. Satan's objective is to destroy you. And he uses his powers to do just that. We know that the forces of evil are everywhere. Evil raises his ugly head in our homes, on our jobs. Makes war against our souls. But look at the passage. He doesn't say that you're not going to be tempted. He just says that no temptation is going to come upon you that you can't bear. Why? Why? Because, number one, God is God is faithful. And not only is he faithful himself, but he has given to us strong armor. And he has told us to put it on. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And not only that, but God is in control of the very temptation that the devil sins. God doesn't send it. God permits it, but he is in control of it. And because of that, Paul said, if God be for you, who can be against you? It does not matter who. It does not matter why. If God is for you, who can be against you? You know, there's a passage in the Old Testament, the book of Job, which is said to be the oldest book in the Bible. I want to talk to you and show you how God controls everything. You're going through something, you can bear it. God is not going to send any temptations that it takes an angel to overcome. And he's not going to send a temptation that you as a young saint can't overcome, but an older saint probably can take that same temptation and overcome it. God is not going to cause you to be tested beyond your ability because he loves you. We have a story here which I believe to be absolutely true. It tells us that there came a day when the the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and the Bible says Satan came with them. And I want you to note, as you read that passage, it's in, it's in Job chapter 1, verse 6. If you read that passage, we see that it was the Lord who initiated the conversation. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and stays away from evil. Satan said, does Job fear God for naught? He says, you built a hedge around him. <laughs> you built a hedge around his house and everything he has. You blessed the work of his hands. His substance is increased in the land. That's why the Lord, that's why the devil, that's why Job is said, serving you. Look what you have done, look what you have done for him. But if you put forth your hand and touch what he has, he'll curse you face to face. That's what Satan said that Job would do. I want you to know, I want you to know, Verse 12. The Lord said to Satan, 
All that you have is in your power. All that he's got is in your power. I'm giving it to you. You can take it off. But on Joe, don't put your hand. You know the story. I don't have to go through it. You know that Satan did very, that very thing, but he can only go so far. He could only take Job's material things, but God was standing in the wings protecting Job himself. And when he had taken everything from him, uh, Job said, the Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job kept his integrity. The Lord had put a block to the devil. I, the Lord loves me like he loves Job. There ain't no question in my mind about it. I don't have no doubt in my mind about it. He loves you like he loves Job too. And Satan is mad now because you're here in this church. Satan is mad now because you got the Holy Ghost. And Satan is trying to destroy you in every way, but the Lord has put the blocks to him. He can only go just so far and no further. And I want you to know that. And don't go around talking about what the devil is doing. And y'all pray for me. I can't help myself. God is on your side. He is faithful. And he will be there to help you in the time of need. You know, there's another time came when the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord and the devil came with them. And the Lord again initiated the conversation. Have you considered my servant Job? Satan was upset. He said, skin for skin. He said, a man will give anything for his life. And the Lord said, said now listen. Satan said, if you put forth your hand and touch his bone, touch his body and his flesh, he said, he'll curse you. Satan's still trying. I told you you didn't know everything, didn't I? The Lord said, he's in your hand, Satan. But you can't touch his life. You can't touch his life. He hit Job from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Boils and sickness came all over him. But he couldn't kill Job. Some of you are going through some tests today. You think, you almost think that the devil's almost got you down. But you can bear it. Because the Lord is going to make a way to escape it. Now, I want you to know what the Bible says. It didn't say that before the temptation comes, he's going to show you how to get out of it. He said, with the temptation. With the temptation. He will make a way of an escape. You got to go through it, my friend. He don't show you the way, but when he comes, the way is going to be made because our God is faithful. His faithfulness is unremitting. His faithfulness is relentless. His faithfulness is there every step of the way from the first day you spoke in other tongues until the last day when you close your eyes in death. The faithfulness of the Lord will walk with you day and night, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. Our God is still on the throne and the devil is mad, but he can't do anything about it. Take courage, my brothers. Take courage, my sisters. You're on the winning side. You're not alone. You're not alone. I know sometimes it, it looks like we're alone. Sometimes, Brother France, you might be sick and nobody call you up on the phone. You might be in the hospital. Pastor, don't get around to you. The devil said, you see, there's nobody caring about you. I ain't got a call. The devil said, oh, so you see, all them people that nobody came to see. The devil comes in on you. But let me tell you, the devil is saying that to you. He's saying the same thing to the saint on the next floor in the same hospital. 
And some of you God has saved. And he saved you from narcotics. And the devil is still talking to you. The devil is still moving. You think you're by yourself. But there's another saint on the other aisle. Who the Lord saved from narcotics. Going through the same thing you're going through. You are not alone. You just think you're alone. But you're not alone. I was reminded of, as I was preparing this sermon, I, I thought about John. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 9. And John said, I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. But know what he said. He said, he said I'm your brother and companion in tribulation. John knew he was out there on the island by himself. But he knew that there was other people in these other churches who were having these problems. And he said, I'm your brother and companion. My friend, you are being tested. We are your companions. Because all of us are being tested. You are being tried. We are your companions. Because all of us are being tried. You are suffering. You are not suffering alone. Because all of us are suffering in some kind of a way. But we have a God who will hear our faintest cry. And we have a God for whom no prayer, no no matter how feeble ever escapes his attention, no matter who you are, no matter how low you may feel you are, God is there to hear your prayers. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Lord, David said, is my shepherd, and I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He anointeth my head with oil. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, but what about the way of escape? Well, there are many ways, uh, there are many ways, uh, and God wants you to use those ways. One of the ways to escape temptation is to resist it. Another way to escape temptation is to flee from it. You think you can play with fire and not get burned, you're wrong. You think you can flirt, and dip and dabble in all kinds of things and get by, you're wrong. God's got a way of escape for you. My brothers and my sisters, let us not be afraid. Let us not fear. Take courage. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And believe in him. And if you believe that he will make a way for escape, he will make it. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll be always with you. And when the time comes for you to shuffle this mortal coil, when you're in a hospital room and nobody is there, and you're ready to die, and no friends or relatives are at your side, always remember that the Lord will be there with you. And sometimes in the wee hours of the morning, when life's uh, light is going out, always remember what the psalmist David said. Ah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies 
He's there. He's the God who is there. Jehovah Jireh. The God, the Lord who is there. The Lord will provide. Whatever you need, he will provide it. Now I can keep on going, keep on preaching. But I'm closing now. Somebody needs to accept to receive Christ. Somebody needs to say, Lord, I'm coming home. We've got water in the pool and someone to baptize you. And the Lord waiting to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid. Have no fear. Do not look to the future and say, I'm afraid. Remember this, that no temptation will overtake you. That you are not able to bear. But the Lord will, with that temptation, provide a way for escape. Whatever you may be, whatever it is, I want you to trust in God. If you're here today, will you get up now and will you come forward? You may be here in this aisle, in this sanctuary, in the balcony, in the overflow, wherever you are, my friend, man or woman, I want you to rise from your seat today and come. Don't wait for anybody else. This is your day. This is your hour. We are waiting for you. There's not a friend. Is there one, is there a man or woman who will say yes to Christ today? The Lord, Jesus. Are you telling me that you are not here today? No, not one. God bless you, my brother. Are you saying that you are not here today? No. God bless you, that sister. It takes a little time. Are you saying that you are not here? Have faith in God. God bless you, my young man. Come on down, young man. What else could he? Don't look around and see the crowd. Look ahead and see Jesus. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, young lady. And I know there are a lot of you here. There's a lot of you here. You're afraid, you're, you're bound. No. The enemy is talking to you and telling you no. Not one. Can you get the victory? Can you get the victory? Jesus knows all about our struggle. We are patiently waiting as you seek to make up your mind. We'll come. God bless you, young lady. We are patiently waiting. I know it takes a little time. We're not going to bother you too long. But it takes a little time. Because this is a big decision. God bless you, young lady. It's a big decision, I know. But the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. God bless you right there. The Lord will be with you. Sometimes, no, 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 no. after a sermon, people rise from all over the congregation. No, and sometimes, no. you have to take a little more time. No, no. Because people are trying to sift things through. Now there's a brother here, or here, or here. There's a sister there, there, there. Who wants to rise from their seat. You ought to do it now. Because I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. But I don't want to close without you. The devil is trying to tell you no. But I don't want to close. Don't let me close without you.
Somebody's on the edge of their seat right now. Somebody's saying, Lord, I want to come. I want to get up. Why don't you do it? God bless you, my dear. I know you're here. Takes time. Come on, friend. Come on, brother. God bless you, my brother. Come on, friend. Come on, come on. I want to come down there with you, but I, I, I don't have my, I don't have my microphone. I'd like to get down in that aisle and encourage you to get up and come on down. Come on, friend. Come on. He's with you. While our choir singing. I'm just going to walk down these aisles here because so somebody wants to be saved. You don't have to run. You don't have to run. He's with you. He knows the way. You don't have to run. He's the God. That never fails. He's there when you need him. come to the altar so we stand by our pews as our ministers come down and stand across the front to share with you let us pray our heavenly father we come before you lord right now we thank you for all that you've done for us and we thank you lord for those precious souls that have come forward for baptism in the name of thy son jesus and now lord there are those who are standing by their pews right now lord seeking your face we pray, O oh Lord, that you will hear their prayers. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, we pray. We know, Lord, that there are difficulties everywhere. Some of them are fighting temptation right now, Lord. It has risen its ugly head in their homes and on their jobs and, and their schools and their universities and colleges across this nation. But we know that you are able, Lord, to bless them. We know that you will. The devil comes in on us, Lord, but we know that he has no power because of, of your power. We know that we survive not by our power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit that is in our lives. Uh, dear God, protect us and give us strength. Let the Holy angels encamp around about us uh, and preserve us. Uh, for your angels are ministering spirits. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, we ask you to help us uh, as we go through this life. Keep us close to thee, Lord. Uh, help us, Lord, uh, to be strong, uh, to have on your whole armor. Help us, oh God, uh, to fight the enemy. To fight the devil on every hand and side. Heal bodies, Lord. Strengthen hearts and souls. And Father, we'll praise your name forever. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you may be seated.
and we want you to be patient as we baptize these precious souls in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.